This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Either way, that match happens when, when Pat was actually already starting to do commentary and we didn't spend a lot of time talking about Pat as a commentator last week. We spent a lot of time talking about him as a, as a singles performer and as a tag team wrestler, and certainly as a behind the scenes figure, but let's talk about Pat, the commentator. Did you get to see much of his work on commentary? He was the shit. And, and Vince used to, used to love to, <laughs> to throw shit to him. And when you go back and they used to do interviews with the talent at ringside. So Vince would a lot of times take the guys that, that could talk and, and carry an interview, you know, all you got to do is stick a microphone in front of Morocco and, and he, he goes off for 10 minutes, but Pat used to love to give, I mean, Pat Vince used to love to give Pat Bruno and Backlund and Frankie Williams and the guys that couldn't talk their way out of a brown paper bag and go, okay, Pat, you got five minutes. You're interviewing Backlund. Go. What's that? Oh, I'm here with WWF champion Bob Backlund. Bob, you got a big, big match coming up with Morocco. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm I'm real excited about uh, facing Don Morocco. Um, he's a real tough competitor, and uh, I, I I I think I can beat him. Uh, is there anything that uh, you have have studied with with with, with your opponent Don Morocco? Uh, he's 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 very tough, and and uh, I'm going to look out for that Asiatic spike. Yes, sir. And a base of, <laughs> you could just see Pat. They're a minute in, and Pat has used up everything he's got. Right. And has no fucking where, not, not a clue. And it is some of the most entertaining in a really bad way shit to watch, to just go back and watch him get through some of these interviews. And then, on the contrary, you know, he would put him with uh, Albano. And Albano would just be smashed out of his mind and be going off and running all around and Pat could never get any of his shit out because Albano's spewing off at the mouth about a beanie BB in a canary's brain and all this other shit and didn't have a fucking clue. But the other thing about it is, is, is during that time, this is a good Pat Patterson rib is, is Albano and Freddie Blassie traveled together. Now, Fred Blassie, was a fashion plate in real life, man. Freddie was dressed to the nines. Freddie did not do anything or go anywhere without his hair being perfect, his clothes being perfect. His car was immaculate. You didn't eat in his car. You didn't drink in his car. You didn't sweat in his car. Your hands, you had to shower before you got into his car. Um... No liquor in the car, no nothing, all right? And Albano traveled with Freddie. Oh, God. So Freddie, Albano would be on last TV. And Freddie, because they were heels, motherfucker. Freddie would back the car up <laughs> to the back door, motor running, and be ready. All Albano had to do was walk his last guy to the ring and come back and... and uh Go right, right out the back door and get in Freddie's car. But God damn it. But God damn it, Lou, you know, go take a shower before you go out for the last match, put on clean shit and get right out to the car. And so Pat, knowing this, Albano, uh, and Albano was, was probably drunk as shit and he's going around doing all of his stuff. And as the match is, is finishing up and they're ready to come back and all that stuff, Pat has a big fucking uh, cup of Coke at the desk where they're doing commentary. And he goes, hey, Lou, I don't pay the case. And throws the Coke on Lou. Oh. 
So Lou now is covered in coke, but Lou can't stop there. Lou starts taking bumps all on the floor and shit and trying to get up. Now he's into the crowd and he's slipping in a filthy floor and he's slipping in beer and shit and popcorn and all this other crap. And he's covered and fucking Pat gets a beer from somebody and throws the beer on him. And then hurry up, Lou. God damn, you got to go. Freddy's waiting for you. And Lou gets up all disheveled and shit, reeking and fucking dripping with fucking soda and, and beer and popcorn and shit and jumps into Freddy's car. And Freddy's got to cuss him out for 10 minutes <laughs> before he takes off because now Lou's fucking up his nice clean car. And Pat would just, ah, the bad, Chase, and then talk Freddy into giving Lou a ride the next night and do the same thing. <laughs> Lou didn't disappoint, man. Lou would fucking just uh, give him an inch. He'll take 10 miles. At one time, I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm fucking going off again. One one time when Lou came back with us with, with the head shrinkers and shit, and Lou was, was coming back around, we were doing a lot of our TV in the Northeast. So Lou really wanted to do something with us. And he would he would come to me constantly. Hey, kid. Hey, kid. Uh, can can you get me in with Vinny? Can you get me in with Vinny? I want to talk to him. I got an idea. I can do this thing with the tag team champions. You know, I manage more tag team champions than anybody in the world. All this stuff. Hey, kid, if you just get me in. So I would try to avoid that and, and just say, hey, Lou, man, you know, uh, right now we're not doing anything. Well, Vince would send Lou to like me. And constant, Lou would come to Vince and corner Vince and, and say, hey, Vinny, Vinny, I got this. He goes, talk to Bruce. Go, go give it, yeah, Good idea, Lou. No, it sounds like a great idea. Go talk to Bruce. I'm trying to run a fucking show. This is in the middle of live shows and shit. And Lou would come up and sit down and start talking to me and, and pitching. I go, Lou, I, I, now's not a good time, man. He was like, Vinny told me to talk to you, kid. So this goes on a little bit to where finally – particularly busy night Vince sends it sent Lou to me. Well, Vince is doing commentary live. Tell you how I remedy that fucking deal. I sent Lou out to Vince in the commercial break. There you go. I said, I said, hey, what's that? Okay. Yeah. I'll send him out right now, Vince. And I sent Lou. Out. I said, he wants to talk to you at ringside. I think he wants you to do color on the next match. Just sit down with him. Lou, put the headset on and just call color in the next match. What's he going to do? We're live. So Lou, I'm <laughs> I did color and I got the fuck you, Bruce. <laughs> he didn't send Lou Albano to me anymore. Let's talk about uh, bad news. Allen for a minute here. I think one of his last, uh, big major things he does with the company, as far as in ring is he's teaming with bad news. Allen for the annual Madison square garden tag tournament. What was his relationship like with bad news? Cause they had worked together even back in California in the late seventies. And it was in the observer that bad news may have been the first person to call attention to, uh, Pat's preferences in a promo where he trying to get heat, of course, and it's a different time referred to Pat as a quote unquote, he, she, I assume there was no heat about that. And those guys were still friendly as far as you knew. Oh, absolutely they were. And Pat was one of the ones that had suggested bad news to come in when he did in the 80s. Um, you go back in, in one of the promos that, that Pat used to cut when he would go to Minneapolis and different things. He had a uh, jacket that had uh, oranges and shit all over it. And Pat would talk about I come from California where we have the, the, the greatest fruits in the world. We have the freshest oranges. We have the freshest. All of our fruits are better than any other fruits anywhere in the world. Mm. Little double entendre, but it was one of Fats, Fats, one of Pat's favorite promos. And when I had the opportunity to grab a couple of jackets, um, he had the orange jacket. I almost grabbed it just for that story because it was, he would always tell the story about being the freshest fruits and the best fruits come from California. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about, um, 
Montreal for a minute, because it's written that in the early eighties, when, uh, Andre owned piece of the, the Montreal territory, he was going to sell it to Pat, but ultimately uh, his shares to Pat, but ultimately they went to Dino Bravo. How different do you think wrestling could have been? I'm not saying that it would have wound up any different, but it is interesting to think about Pat Patterson, perhaps becoming a partial owner in another territory, right? Yeah. And it was a uh, Montreal, you know, the, the unfortunate thing about Montreal was it had so many different owners right? and so many guys that had a piece of that pie and that were involved in that. And it's probably one of the best things that ever happened to Pat, not, not doing that and getting involved in it. But yeah, there, there were, you look at Georgia and the, the wrestlers, Jack and Jerry Briscoe owned a portion of it. Paul Jones owned, owned a portion of it. Uh, Ole had a portion of it. It's just different guys that Barnett, you know, all, all these different guys. And it never, I think all those partnerships usually ended in disaster. Oh yeah. Talk to me a little bit about, and I know this is switching gears a little bit, but we've often said here on the show, well, you know, Montreal was different. Let's talk about that for a moment and Montreal being different. What was his relationship like with some of the, the other Montreal talents that we know, whether it's Dino Rougeau, Rick Martel was Pat tight with those guys as well. Yeah, they all stuck together and maybe I don't know if it was the same in Montreal because a lot of times there appeared to be quite a bit of jealousy and infighting Mm. amongst themselves Mm. in Montreal. However, when you take them out, those guys kind of looked after each other and, and watched each other's back. So that, that was interesting. And, and it was, it was evident, you know, there was before there was the click, there was the quote Montreal click and people, you know, felt that, well, they've got all this power and shit. It was no different. The names just change, but absolutely. And, and Pat, Oh God, it would, he would tell these, these stories. And I, I can't, I can't tell the, the best one about the, there, there was a, a young lady in Australia that ran like the hotel and stuff. And, and, and Pat was going to take one for the team one night because, because she was so good to everybody and she loved Pat that she thought she could, you know, bring him to the other side. And he said he tried. <laughs> he was like, oh, I tried. I, I, I get down there and I look and out of pace. I can't. <laughs> and he just couldn't do it. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.